Okay. Now, this suggests, is it the orange or the green one that's more likely? Looks like the green one, right? You see how it dips down in between these two guys, right? Now, are you sure? Are you positive? Is that, like, are you certain that that's what it's going to do? No. Not certain yet? I'm certain. You're certain? Okay, some of you are not yet, okay? Why not? I mean, just so we're really sure, because we're still, like, these are new objects to us, right? Can someone suggest to me another point that might be useful? Negative one? You want to try, try negative one? So if I put it in, right, can you help me out? This will become negative one. What will this object become? X minus 2. That's negative 3. Negative 1 times negative 3 times 2. Negative 1 times negative 3 times 2. The two negatives will cancel. So I'm really doing 1 times 3. That's 6, isn't it? 6. Where's that going to be for me? Somewhere up here. Right? Negative 1, 6. Right? Positive 6, yeah? Negative 1 goes to the left. And then 6 goes up. X and then Y. Yeah. So, interesting. Let's put this on. I'm, according to my scale, I'm about here. Okay. So I think, before we actually put the shape in, I think we roughly know where this is going now, don't we? Okay. You can see it's got to go up, it's got to go down, and then it's going to have to... The whole shape exists because your domain is... Have a look. All real. <laughs> All real values of x. There's no square roots. There's no division or anything like that breaking things. Okay. So I'm going to put a line through this. Okay. I'm going to go something like this. Let's see. Like so. Okay. Now this is. Weirdly, even though it's also a cubic, right, and I'm now going to come to Rassen's question, right, if I did expand this all out, the reason why I know it's going to be cubic is there are one, two, three x's, right? So if I went and did this, um, I would get y equals, uh, let's do this one first. So that's going to be x squared plus x minus 6. x squared plus x minus 6. How did I do that, by the way? How did I know without like doing the first outside, inside, last? How did I know that was going to be what it was? When I, if I gave you an equation like this, what would you do to factorize this? What would you do? You're looking for a pair of numbers, right? Based on the coefficients, aren't you? You're going to search for a pair of numbers that adds up to this and multiplies this. And those numbers are 3 and 2, right? Well, here I'm doing that in reverse. I'm looking at these two. And I'm saying, oh, when you add those, you get 1. Yeah, I'm going in the reverse order. And when you multiply these, you get negative 6, right? So now I'm going to finish the expansion. This is what I get. You see why it's a cubic? What, what is it that signals to me it's a cubic in this line here? X cubed. It's the x cubed. And there's nothing higher than that, right? There is an x squared, but that doesn't make it quadratic because this x cubed kind of takes over, right? It's the most important thing. So this guy here is a lot more complicated, yeah. What does the x cubed do there? Uh, I mean, x squared. This guy here, yeah. right? Well, when you have a look at this guy here, which had no x squared term in it, and it didn't have an x term in it either, it just went straight to the constant, right? What happens is the x squared and the x, they change this shape in here. Do you notice how this is much simpler, right? Do you agree? And this, this like wiggles around wildly, and that wiggling around happens because of these terms in here. Okay. Later on, we're going to talk about um, addition and subtraction of functions, and it will become a bit more. It will make a little more sense when you think about these three as three separate functions and what happens when you put them together. But this is what you will end up with. Okay. So, right. That's okay. All right. Now, quick question to you. Right. Um, oh yeah. Did it come back to you? That's fine. I like weird questions. Um, how, would we, how would we phrase in the exam? So I don't, I don't know if they're going to the exam. They would say, what is this? What is this? they would say, graph this. That would be the entire question. Graph that. Graph TFC, stay to draw the, draw the, the make Write the equation of. They could totally do this in reverse order. So for example, <laughs> we're about to do that. For example, I could give you this. I could give you this. And we should be able to sort of reverse engineer. This takes a bit more thought. But I should be able to reverse engineer this out of that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Guys, I want to hear Serang's question because it might be relevant to all of us. But I can't hear it right now. Do you want to go ahead, Serang? I have this problem in the as well. When they start saying words with a math equation, I'm like, 
What are they asking me? Yeah. I know the technique, but do I know how to like... So, and you, you guys might feel, I certainly felt like this a lot, when you put words into there, it becomes a lot more tricky. You have to interpret those quite carefully. And frankly, even though maths obviously is a lot about symbols and equations and numbers, the words are just important. Like that's why I talked about when you put in a word like when. That's why we introduce language and make such a big deal about it, right? The language is like a, an integral part and you can't separate it out. So it's just as a new thing to understand within this, okay? Now, I have one last point that I wanted to make on this before um, I let you guys have a bit more of a play without my explicit guidance, okay? We have a look at these parabolas, right? Do you remember this point here, this point here, the top or the bottom of the parabola, right? It has a special name of its own. Do you remember that? We call it the vertex. The vertex. Now, based on today's lesson, you now know it also has another name, right? Do you see that's kind of like a spot where the graph is going down, and then like it stops for a minute, and then it goes back up. So you can also call this a stationary point, right? So we're going to come back to this language. Did you have a question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was ah, now we also, so it's like, wait a second, what is this thing, right? What is, what is its name? Is it a turning point? Is it a vertex? Is it a stationary point? And the answer is, the answer is yes. It is all of these things, right? We call it the vertex because that's kind of like the, the central point of the parabola, right? It's also a turning point because it turns around, right? It turns around. Is this a turning point? No. Does it turn around? It does not. It like kind of is going up, then it stops for a minute, but then it just keeps on going up. So it's not a turning point, but it is. It does stop for a minute. It does pause. Yeah. And then resting. Yeah, yeah. That is exactly what it's doing. You could call it a. You could call it a resting point if you like, right? But it's the same idea. Yes. Now, we, like I said, like I promised, we're going to go much more into that language when we develop calculus, but it's important to know what that point is. Okay, now, here's my real question, though. Did you notice uh, this guy here has not one, but two points where it sort of pauses, right? Let me ask you this. Are those, do they look like stationary points to you? No. no. They look like parabolas. Yeah, both of them are what, is, what does stationary mean? It means that it just kind of stops for a minute. Another way to say it is the gradient at that exact point is zero. Is zero. Does it, um, we, ha we will later on develop tools to like do this properly, but does it look like it sort of is going to have a gradient zero at that point? No. Yeah. Yes. 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 Hmm. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to have to spend a lot more time on this later, but I'm going to give you a short answer, which is at that point, totally does. It totally stops. It's stationary there, it's stationary there. As an added bonus, as Gary's pointing out, it also yeah. turns there as well, doesn't it? It sort of goes up and then down, down and then up. Okay? But here's the tricky thing, right? How did we find the, I'll come to your question in a second, Rustin. How did we find the vertex on a parabola? Because you're supposed to be able to find that, right? How do you do it? Um, we looked at x equals minus b on 2a. What is that? What's the significance of x equals minus b on 2a? What's that? To a parabola, what is the significance of that? It's from the quadratic formula, but it's not the whole thing. It's only a little part. It's taking up the it has a name, this object. Axis of symmetry. Ah, it's right down the middle of the parabola, isn't it? It's the axis of symmetry. Okay. Does this thing have an axis of symmetry? Hmm. You would say no. Why, Zaki? That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a no from Zaki, okay. Uh, it's the, it's the um, what is it, like Australia's Got Talent. It's like, there's the X, okay. No, not, not happy, okay. There's got to be a mirroring of some kind. Right? There isn't mirroring, right? Odd symmetry doesn't apply. So it's like, oh, what do I do with this thing, right? Now, here's the thing, right? Unlike here, where the vertex is really easy to find, you just like pop this in, it just like automatically gives you the vertex every single time, right? The, um, the vertices, that's the plural by the way, these vertices here, they're harder to find. We have to develop a whole new branch of mathematics to actually locate those. Now for that reason, being that at this moment in time you have not developed it yet, you actually don't need to know exactly where they are. You might notice I drew them slightly off those points I had before, because I can tell you right now, these are not exactly where they are. Right? I, in fact, at this moment, I don't know where they are, um, where it turns around. It could actually do this, like that. It could turn around at a completely separate point, and I'm pretty sure, in fact, for these that it does. Okay? 
but we will develop the machinery for how to locate those points later on. At the moment, we don't need to worry about their exact position because you can't find them. 